Hey there everybody, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com, and welcome back to another episode of The John Morris Show. So I saw an interesting question over on Quora that I thought would be great to answer for the show. Um, by the way, if you aren't over on Quora and you aren't following me, head on over to Quora, that's Q-U-O-R-A dot com slash John dash Morris dash 67 and go ahead and follow me over there uh, there's a lot of and I, I suggest digging in on Quora too because there's a lot of really pertinent questions and then great answers to those questions I'm over there answering questions a lot of other people are too and then if you have a question for me directly you can just answer it right there on the site invite me to answer it and I'll uh, try to go ahead and do that so if you're not haven't done that yet go ahead and head on over there uh, but this question that I saw, I thought was uh, a really good question. I wanted to, again, answer it here for the show. So the question was, what are the five essential skills every web developer should have? And of course, there were a lot of great answers, but I think my answer might be a little bit different than a lot of people. So I want to go ahead and give that to you. So the first thing is, and so a lot of people answered really technical things so they would have you know html is one or they, they you know they might have php is one they might have security is one they might have wordpress is one whatever most of it focused around technical stuff but for me i actually lump that all into one because i think there are some things technical skills are obviously important they're a must but there's some other things that are just as important and really in some cases it's probably more important so I lump technical skills into one. So just having some basic technical skills, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, your server side language of choice, whether that's PHP or ASP or whatever it is you decide to go into. You want to have some basic technical skills down. Now, I think that one is pretty obvious, so I won't dive too much into that one. But uh, again, definitely you want to have those those basic technical skills down. The second one I have on here is probably it's really close of, <laughs> about being the most important in my mind, and that is reliability. And now you might not think of that necessarily as a skill when you first hear about it, but really it being reliable is a set of skills that you you learn over time. And having done this for ten plus years. I can really attest to that because I've had to teach myself those skills. A lot of people think it's just about discipline, but it's really not. It's it's a it's about learning skills that make it so that you don't have to just gut it out every time. So some of the skills that I would lump in there are things like how to manage your time, how to be able to grind when it's crunch time and be able to grind stuff out, how to plan projects effectively so that uh, you 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 time them out so that you're not pushing yourself putting yourself in a position where you have to grind at the end and a number of other things that you really need to do in order to be reliable but being reliable is really one of the most important things that a client is looking for uh, I know I've said this before but Clients oftentimes aren't looking for anything too overly complex uh, technically. Most of the projects that you work on aren't going to be some super advanced thing. So having all this talent uh, in, in the technical area isn't going to allow you to override the other areas. In fact, uh, it, it won't even make up for them if you're not doing those other areas right. So being reliable is one of the most important things you can do. So that's the second one on my list. The third one is right up there with reliability, and that is communication. And this is really a tough one for a lot of developers, and it's it's really an opportunity for you because so few developers do this well that if you do it well, you're going to land clients for life. In fact, you know if you if you wanted to kind of focus on one thing and the way that you deliver your projects that could really allow you to get your clients to stick with you how you communicate is one of those things that's the thing that i would focus on because again when you do it right so few other people do it and clients appreciate it so much that they're really going to stick with you even if there's some issues in terms of 
your technical skill or even your reliability is you can't completely flake but if you're communicating through all of that they're going to be a lot more likely to stick with you so again there's some skills that go along with this the first is just really committing to it understanding how important it is and committing to uh, communication then being disciplined to do it consistently to do it really kind of over communicate with your clients and and give them information every step of the way because when they don't hear from you they get antsy and that causes a lot more problems for you than uh, if you just to communicate even if there's some sort of issue which leads to the next one which is the courage to do it when it's hard so sometimes it's hard to communicate sometimes something's wrong sometimes you can't figure something out sometimes you mess something up sometimes you drop the ball and so having the courage to be able to uh, communicate when it's hard to do it that's that's another one and then of course the talent just to do it effectively and if you commit to it and you're doing it com consistently you'll develop that talent you'll start to learn how to communicate with your clients in a way that that really uh uh you know takes care of their fears and 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 connects with them so that you can work through all of the issues all right the next one on my list is how to market yourself so again this is one that i think a lot of developers and designers maybe don't think is as important or they don't like doing it or they you know think that all sales is gimmicky or slimy or whatever the case is but being able to market yourself is again incredibly important because no matter how talented you are if you can't communicate that to people uh, they're never really they're, they're not going to hire you they're not going to buy your app or whatever it is you're doing if you can't communicate that story to them it's just not going to work out very well so it depends again what you're doing but if you're doing freelancing then it's really about learning how to develop a system for getting clients and that's one of the things that I teach a lot of is for freelancers developing a system for getting clients um, but you need to put that in place instead of relying on freelance sites or hoping and wishing people show up at your website or trying to network for years before you ever get any meaningful business when you can develop a system the system I teach is content based then you can start really developing getting clients right away and developing a system that will bring them to you you know month after month after month if you are trying to get hired at a tech company and you really have to be good at writing a resume so you can get an interview and then acing that interview so that you get the job because a lot of tech companies really you're always kind of interviewing for example my little brother worked at IBM at IBM when you get hired you don't get hired into necessarily a set position every job or project that you work on you actually bid on and there'll be other people bidding on that job and the manager of that job gets to pick what developers that he or she works with so you're constantly selling yourself to managers and so forth to get hired on these jobs so it's really a never-ending process so you have to be good at it if you're selling apps well you have to be good at selling your apps you have to be good at convincing people to to buy your apps whether it's web apps phone apps whatever it is All right so how to market yourself that's the next one and finally the last one is how to learn and the reason that is is because everything is always changing if you've been in the web design web development industry or market for for any amount of time you'll know you'll have experienced how quickly everything changes what I was doing when I first started isn't even really on the radar anymore of what anybody is doing and the things that I think about on a daily basis so it's changed so much and it it changes more and more and more every year so you have to really be able to have a, a commitment to learning be able to learn quickly and so the key there is just to embrace it and dive in you know, embrace that you're gonna have to always be learning and when new things come out be the first to try them not the last dive in figure out how they work uh, and keep yourself ahead of the curve All right so those are my five answers for what are the five essential skills every web developer should have now I'd love to hear what your answers are so 
If you want to share with me your answers, go ahead and do that wherever you happen to be listening to this on. I am sure there's a place for you to leave a comment, so uh, go ahead and leave me a comment, and I'd love to hear what yours are. All right, so that'll do it for this episode of the show. Now, if you'd like to ask me a question yourself, as I mentioned earlier, you can go on over to Cora.com slash John Morris Morris dash 67 and uh, ask me a question there, or you can simply tweet me at JP Morris hashtag JMO. I want to know, and I'll look at those as well and try to answer those on the show for you as well. All right. So one last thing before I go, uh, I wanted to encourage you to check out an article that I wrote recently over on LinkedIn that was really incredibly popular and I think that you might get a lot out of. And the name of that article is Five Pages Every Web Developer Should Have on Their Website. And so I I cover what those five pages are and then what are the things you really need to pay attention to when you're building those five pages. So if you go to linkedin.com slash John Morris online and you'll see where you can see all of my latest posts on my profile there. Again, it's the five pages every web designer should have on their website. Go ahead and check out that article. And then again, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, that'll do it for this episode of the show. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.